The patient is a 77-year-old female with critical recurrent carotid stenosis after prior CEA who is being treated with transcarotid stenting using flow reversal as part of the Silk Road trial. The patient was placed in a supine position and a minimum distance of 5 centimeters between the carotid bifurcation and clavicle confirmed by ultrasound. The heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle were identified and after local infiltration with half percent marking solution, a transverse incision was made to dissect out the common carotid artery. The common carotid artery was controlled with an umbilical tape and a 5-0 proline suture was placed in U-stitch fashion in the anterior wall of the common carotid artery. This was to be used for later micropuncture access and placement of the arterial sheath for flow reversal. Attention was then turned to the contralateral common femoral vein where micropuncture access was gained under ultrasound guidance. A 9 French venous return sheath was then introduced over an 035 wire into the common femoral vein. Micropuncture access was then gained in the common carotid artery after systemic heparinization with 7,000 units of intravenous heparin to maintain an ACT of 250. Direct fluoroscopic visualization of the wire tip was maintained to ensure placement within the common carotid artery. The micropuncture sheath was then introduced into the common carotid artery and hand injection of contrast was performed to confirm good position and confirm the position of the critical internal carotid artery stenosis. Wire exchange was then performed for a .035 inch Amplat super stiff wire with a one centimeter floppy tip. After dilatation with a nine French dilator, the Silk Road arterial cannula system was introduced directly into the common carotid artery. After careful aspiration with heparinized saline solution, hand injection of contrast was performed in the arterial sheath system to confirm good position within the common carotid artery. The sheath was secured to the chest with an ioband dressing and the flow reversal tubing connected to the arterial cannula with appropriate back bleeding. The tubing was then connected to the venous return sheath and confirmation of good flow in the low and high flow settings was performed with injection of heparinized saline solution. The flow reversal system was connected to the arterial cannula allowing flow, flow reversal due to the differential pressure between the common carotid artery and the femoral venous pressure. An inline filter was used to prevent return of any microembolic debris into the femoral venous system. Both low and high flow settings were confirmed with injection of heparinized saline solution. A 6 to 8 millimeter by 40 millimeter exact stent was prepped on the back table and preloaded with a .014 inch Asahi Pro Water guide wire. A vascular bulldog was placed on the common carotid artery and institution of high flow reversal was obtained. The lesion was crossed with the 014 Asahi Pro Water wire and subsequently the carotid stent advanced across the critical stenosis. After deployment of the stent under direct visualization, post-deployment balloon angioplasty was performed with a 4 mm by 20 mm balloon. Completion angiogram in both an AP and lateral view, both cervical and intracranial were obtained to assure good apposition of the stent and good intracranial flow with no embolization. The patient remained neurologically intact throughout the procedure. After flushing the tubing system with heparinized saline solution, the filter and tubing were passed onto the back table for later direct inspection to evaluate for any debris within the filter system. The femoral venous sheath was removed and direct pressure was held. Direct visualization of the common carotid artery puncture site was then obtained and removal of the arterial cannula was performed with securing of the puncture site with a previously placed 5-0 proline U-stitch. Hemostasis was confirmed and a 20 milligram reversal protamine dose was given. The results in 141 high surgical risk patients revealed no major strokes, two minor strokes, and two deaths. The overall stroke rate of 1.4% is the lowest ever reported in a prospective multi-center trial of CAS.